your life. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Elmore deep, left side three, and good! From 30 feet, John Elmore! The Drive with Paul Swan. Welcome into the Wednesday, June 19th edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Coming up on the program today, basketball camp continuing across the Tri-State. And Marshall's got their own version of it. We're going to talk to Jared West, one of the standouts from Dan Dan Tony's squad, to talk about camp. He's going to join us about 5.15. And then coming up a little bit later on the program, David Kahn from the West Virginia Power, fresh off the South Atlantic League All-Star Game. So we'll talk to David about that. And you know what? I haven't talked to David since the Stanley Cup. He said Boston was going to win the Stanley Cup. Um, we're going to talk to him about that. And, of course, we'll take your phone calls this hour on the Miller Lite phone lines at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite hold true. Great taste. Only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. Now, yesterday we were talking about a couple of the best duos, Marshall University football. And there's so many players and so many combinations. I had to limit it to four, though, because we were going on Twitter with the poll question yesterday. So I had to limit it to four. So here are the four choices I gave you yesterday. Uh, I had to get Byron Leftwich in there. Darius was. I had to. So we put him up there. And I couldn't come up with which combination with Michael Payton, Troy Brown, Mike Bartram. I couldn't figure out which combination would be the best. So you know what? I went with the more iconic duo. I went with Brown and Bartram. So I went with those two. And then, of course, most recently, Rakeem Cato, Tommy Shuler. I went with those guys, and I put them all up against Chad Pennington and Randy Moss. Boy, did you respond. As of right now, final results, 410 of you decided that it was Pennington and Moss. 87%. Responded Pennington and Moss, the best football duo at Marshall University. 9% of you said Cato and Schuler and Brown and Bartram and Leftwich and Watts, both those duos, 2%. So what's that tell you? That tells you that Pennington and Moss, number one in your heart. And I know some of you were trying to get it to 88%. Just go with that iconic number of 88. And you came close. There were a couple of times where it was sitting at 88%. So 87% will round up, we'll say, just about 88% just because, well, we like the number 88 for that duo, obviously. So new question today. We'll go with this theme, and we'll talk about it more later on the program. But I'm going to set it up for you right now. I already got it on Twitter. I went ahead and threw it up there early so you can have a shot at the thing. And I want to know best basketball duo at Marshall University. Now, here are your choices. We went back in history a little bit, and we went a little contemporary as well. First of all, you've got Hal Greer and C.B. Price. I think if you're going to have a conversation debate about duos at Marshall University, you have to include Hal Greer and C.B. Price. And then you got to throw some love for Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. Those guys, we're talking Marshall history here. And then Skip Henderson and Rodney Holden. I wanted to throw John Taft in here somewhere. I didn't know where to put him. But I thought Henderson and Rodney Holden made more sense. Talked to a couple of people as well that concurred. You know, we um, we had a committee this morning going over this and trying to come up with the best four. And, of course, I knew that I had to have Elmore and Burks because right now they're the most recent duo. And the poll started an hour ago, and right now, 55% say John Elmore and C.J. Burks. 5% say Henderson and Rodney Holden. 15% say Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. And Hal Greer and C.B. Price, 25%. Now, I think this is going to be a little different than the poll yesterday because, well, we all, almost to a Herd fan, will pick Pennington and Moss any day. This might be a little more generational. Older fans might go Hal Greer. Older fans might go Henderson and Rodney Holden. Younger fans might go Elmore and C.J. Burks. Don't forget Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. I'm sure Dan D'Antoni sitting here right now going, wait, wait a minute, why am, why am I not in this poll? Sorry, we went with Mike. You know, we, we went with the 
I mean, you're the better coach, Dan. You're the better coach. We we went with the better basketball player, Mike. I mean, that's going to be my excuse to him anyway. I don't think he'll accept that as an answer. So that's what we've got for the whole question. You can go on Twitter right now. You've got until the end of tomorrow around this time. This is going to shut down before we go on the air tomorrow. We'll talk about this poll throughout the day. And maybe if you got a better suggestion, hit me up in the comments on Twitter as well. Let me know, at Paul Swan, is there a better duo? Did we forget someone? Is there someone else? And same thing with the football. If there is a better duo, if there's a better duo than Pennington and Moss, let me know. I'll wait. I'll do one of those. So what do we got coming up on the program today? Well, as we mentioned, Jared West is going to join us here in a few minutes. I'm going to get his take on the poll, see if he can um, throw a duo in there. I don't know. Maybe it's um, maybe it's. Jared West and Jansen Williams, he's thinking ahead. Maybe it's going to be those guys. They're going to supplant Elmore and Burks. I'm only saying that because today our producer, Jansen Williams, has control of the microphone volume, so at any moment it could go off. So i got to keep him happy. But uh, coming up next, we're going to hear from Jared West, talk to him. Camp is going on. Marshall, they got a lot of camps going on, and uh, Jared's going to tell us about the basketball version, what's going on there with them. And then later on, we'll hear from David Kahn from the West Virginia Power, fresh off that South Atlantic League All-Star game. He'll tell us about how that went down and uh, how important that was for at least the Canal Valley. That's all when we continue with today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Ad Council. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Wednesday, June 19th edition. The Drive continues on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. And again, if you haven't had a chance to yet or if you're going to do it tonight, you can vote on our show poll today. Best basketball duo at Marshall University. You've got your choices of Hal Greer and C.B. Price. You've got Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. You've got Skip Henderson and Rodney Holden. And you've got John Elmore and C.J. Burks. And right now, Elmore and Burks leading early, but we've got plenty of time to see where that goes. Joining us now on the program from Marshall University. He is uh, one of the uh, outstanding returning players coming up. Next season, which we can't wait to get to, is one of my favorite players. And of course, yeah, I know I say that a lot, but one of my favorite guys to talk to, Jared West, with us on the program. And I know this has been a pretty busy time for you. You've got team camp coming up, and of course, you've got uh, workouts as well. But as a basketball player coming up, what was team camp like for you? And then what's it going to be like for these uh, kids that are uh, going to be at the Henderson Center this week? Um, team camps are always they're always really fun. You know, uh, this is a good opportunity for high schoolers. You know, to to just be able to play with their team and you know get acclimated to their teammates and everything like that. But it's always fun just being able to play basketball. I always enjoyed playing during the three week period with my high school team. Um, it's just a good chance to be able to play with my team. You know, get a, get a better feel for everybody and everything like that. So I know this is going to be fun for all of them. It's going to be fun for us to watch some good competition this week, some good teams play. So it's going to be an exciting couple of days. Has anything changed? I know we're talking a short time span here, but has uh, anything really changed from the way camps are uh, run at Marshall to when you were coming up going through these camps? Because you know, if you're a high school basketball player, this isn't your first time coming to camp. You've been probably doing it for many years. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how much has actually changed, but what I do know is that um, a lot of these high schoolers are looking forward to these camps. You know, They like to come to these camps just to be able to play, but they also like to uh, come to these camps for, you know, to get a uh, better, more exposure from certain coaches and certain schools and everything like that. So I know that was one of the big things that when I came through, that was a big uh, thing for me as far as going to camps. I think that's the same for these high schoolers now, but I'm not sure really much has changed besides that, honestly. So if I'm a kid, I'm going to a camp what makes Marshall a special camp to come to? Because there's so many camps out there, and you, you've been to a lot of these camps. You've seen them you know, throughout the, uh, the region and all over the state. What's special about Marshall? What's, uh, what's going on at Marshall that makes this camp maybe one that shouldn't be missed? 
Well, one good thing about these Marshalls team camp is you get to play a lot of games in a short time span. So if you, you know, I know my brother, they're, they're coming in tomorrow. They play Thursday and Friday. They play six games in two days. So that gives them a lot of uh, a chance to play a lot of games together. And uh, also I think the good thing about Marshalls camp is there's a lot of good teams in as well. Um, you look at the schedule, there's a lot of good teams coming back, a lot of good returning players um, from West Virginia, but also like in the in the region. So there's going to be a lot of good teams, a lot of good competition, a lot of good competition, a lot of good uh, competitive games. And, you know, I think that's one of the, the important things about these camps is, you know, how much competition is there, how many really good teams, good players are in these camps. And I think that's why Marshall is a good one. How important is it for you to be a part of these camps, knowing that there's some youngster out there that's probably mm-hmm. looking up to you, thinking, hey, he's uh, he, look at where he's at. Maybe I can be the next Jared West. Um, this It's very important to me. You know, anytime you get a chance to play basketball, that's just a great opportunity. You know, it's a fun game to play. But I can remember being in the, their uh, shoes back when I was in high school, just looking for an opportunity to play, looking for an opportunity to really get better and just get a chance to play at this level, honestly, and I think that's one of the big things for kids nowadays. You know, anytime they get a chance to play in, a, in front of college coaches and in, in a college arena, you know, I think that just really excites them because I know that excited me when I was coming through when I was in high school. So, you know, I think it's very important to me. It's very good to see kids come out, being able to play and just compete against each other, and it's going to be fun and competitive this week, which makes it even that much better. So um, I think that's very important to me also. I know people look up to me, and I think it's just for me to be around and just, uh, you know, give words of advice every now and then. Just be around talking to the kids and being around the people. Um, I think that's very good for, for them. Do you think there are many kids that are coming to camp that are thinking, man, I could be the next Jansen Williams? Do you think there are anybody that's coming to camp with that <laughs> dream to be the next Jansen Williams? Of course. You know, Jansen's a really good player. Jansen's had a really good um, three years at Marshall, two years on the – being able to play so far, he's done a lot for this program. And I think, uh, you know, James is a really good guy as well, which also helps. And I think people know that and they realize that with his personality and the way he interacts with people. But um, definitely I think when people watch James play and what he does and brings to our program, to our team, I think that impacts a lot of people. You know, I think a lot of people look forward to being like James honestly, or being able to play like James because James is a really good player. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if I if – I, Heard a couple of people in these next couple of days talk about Jansen or how they think Jansen's really good or how they want to be with, like him in a couple of years. Those are great words. I think Jansen did a good job coaching you up for that question. That that is that is a great response. Uh, we've got a, we've got a poll question right now, uh, trying to figure out the best basketball duo at Marshall University. Uh, you know, we went back in time for some of this. You know, names like Hal Greer and CB Price. Mike D'Antoni, you know, the, the, the good D'Antoni, the one that can play basketball, and, and <laughs> Russell Lee, uh, Skip Henderson, Rodney Holden, you know, some of these names familiar to some others, you mm-hmm. know, kind of scratching their head. And then Elmore and Burks, you know, you're familiar with those guys. They were okay at Marshall. Right. Um, yeah. If we're going we're gonna to get you on this list sometime and have that debate, best basketball duo at Marshall University, who are you pairing up with? with uh, you pairing up with Iran? You pairing up with Jansen? Is there someone else you're just going to pair up with and – and take over that mantle of being the best duo? Uh, that's not a question. You know, <laughs> I like my teammates, and I like playing with a lot of them. Um, it would probably have to be Jansen, though, because we came in the same class, and we started a lot of games from our freshman year and played in the NCAA tournament a lot of minutes in our freshman year. So I think it would have to be Jansen, honestly, with these last few years down the stretch. You know, we start, we both started a lot of games. Jansen started every game last year. So I, I think it has to be Jansen. Okay. So here, in a couple of years from now, we're going to have the poll question. We're going to revisit it, and we're going to remove Elmore and Burks, and we're going to put Jared West <laughs> and Jansen Williams on this poll question. Remove those guys because uh-huh. everybody's going to forget about Elmore and Burks. I mean, who are we've already forgot about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, John and CJ – they're they're really good and they did a lot for this program. So we'll try we'll try to remember them a little bit at least. <laughs>
Jared West joining us on the program. Uh, team camps coming up, but uh, you also had the uh, the other camps that uh, took place uh, not that long ago uh, with the little herd camp, the herd camp, and uh, those are all these fun days. I get to see these little kids that come out there, and um, I'm sure some of them just have no concept whatsoever of the game of basketball, and I'm sure you see some other kids that look like seasoned pros. So uh, how fun was that just to, to go out there and you know maybe lighten up some kid's eye who has never really touched a basketball before? Um, those camps are always really fun. You know, being able to see the kids come out and just play and have fun, work hard, you know, that's, that's the most important thing is that they're having fun, honestly. And, you know, they meet a lot of new people. They already have a lot of friends coming in, so they know a lot of people. But, um, honestly, at that age, a lot of those kids are just having fun. You know, they're just, they're just happy to be in the gym, being able to play basketball. And that's honestly the most important thing. They look up to a lot of us. So, for them to be around us, being able to play basketball with their friends, just being able to have fun in the competitions and stuff like that, I think that's great for them. Have you found that with uh, all the success that this team has had over the last few years, have these camps picked up as far as people being interested in them coming and uh, wanting to be a part of the Marshall camp? I mean, you've had a good run so far. You know, you get a uh, Conference USA championship. You get an NCAA victory, first ever for the program. You get a uh, CIT championship. I mean, it's been a good run so far. Yeah, I definitely would say that for sure. Um, I think we've gained a lot of respect over these last couple of years. Even before um, Jansen and I were able to play, I think we started gaining a little respect. You know, Coach Dan's done a great job of that. But I do think that is a, a product of how well we've done in these last couple of years that I think that um, kids, especially older kids, you know, come to these team camps are really taking it serious and really have a better understanding of what martial basketball really means now because, um, you know, we, we've done a lot for this program and this community, and um, we have a lot of high expectations, honestly, and I think a lot of people are starting to realize that. And um, I think those kids get excited about that, you know, being able to come to the games or even get a chance to maybe even play here once someday. You know, I think that's very exciting for them, and I think they really look forward to it. Jared West joining us on the program. Team camp coming up this week at the Henderson Center. And, of course, you guys uh, in between all of that, trying to get all your work and trying to get all of your uh, off-season preparation. And so you got to answer a question for me. I, I asked Jansen, uh, what was it like being guarded by you? And he said, you, he said one, you couldn't guard him. <laughs> and, and then he qualified that because he wouldn't let you because I guess he knows better than to actually get into that situation. So what would that pairing be like? <laughs> if you were on Jansen Williams, how would you minimize him? How would you neutralize him? You know, how much of a bulldog would you be on him? Uh, I think Jansen is pretty smart <laughs> in that answer. Um, I think I would just really try to pressure him and crowd him and get under him. You know, James is a tall guy, so I try to get under him. When he puts the ball on the floor, I try to get it quick. But um, I was just trying to limit his shot attempts, close the airspace as much as I can because Jansen can really shoot it. So I would try to make him put the ball on the floor, and then when he puts it down, try to get it. But I think he, I think he's smart in uh, his answer to that question. <laughs> would your game be a little bit more cerebral with him to try to maybe make up that size difference? Uh, would you take advantage of maybe his vanity? I mean, because, you know, on any given day, he's probably the best-looking guy on the court, right? I mean, that's at least the impression I get from him. Um, I don't know if he told you that, but that seems, that, that's, his, that's his personal opinion, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I like Jansen. He's a really good friend of mine. That's my, that's my guy. So I'll let him have that one for now. But, you know, we'll talk about it tomorrow, and we'll probably have a different opinion on it. <laughs> All right, I can't wait to hear that conversation. Jared West joining us on the program. For you personally, how's this been? Uh, I know you didn't have much rest between postseason, getting into the CIT, winning that thing, and then going through everything you're going through now. So how's it just been for you, just decompressing, getting over the fact that, okay, this is great, now we got to get ready for the next season. I, mean, I haven't even enjoyed this five minutes. Um, it was a really long season. You know, we had a lot of ups and downs, but we finished strong in the CIT. But um, honestly, it's just been a grind, really, you know, with summer school starting, you know, summer workouts, being in the weight room, playing pickup with the guys, working out on your own. It's just been a grind, honestly. But um, I think this is what I signed up for. So I'm really looking forward to next season. 
I'm excited. I think we're going to be really good. Um, but it's been it's been a you know a hard process throughout these last couple of weeks. We've been going real hard, working really hard as a team. And you know I think uh, that's part of it. You know I think that's what the postseason and you know summer workouts is all about is just trying to continue to get better. So we've all, we've all been really trying to take advantage of that. And I think it's really good for all of us to just be here and uh, working on our games every day. Jared West, our guest, Marshall Basketball. I uh, can't wait for tomorrow to hear about tomorrow anyway. Uh, I'm uh-huh. thinking I'm thinking he, he might get one or two blocks on you, and I'm thinking you're going to get at least seven or eight steals on him. Okay, that's a good race, yeah. I, I can agree with that. <laughs> I mean, because he is taller. He's going to get lucky now and then and get a couple of them, knock them out. But, um, yeah, you're faster. You're, you're, yeah. you're smaller, you're lighter, you can go around him, steal the ball. <laughs> I mean, just – Whatever happens, make sure I get this and we can post it on YouTube or something. <laughs> All right. Jansen's a good rim protector, though. we got to give him credit for that one. So okay, we, get a couple blocks. we will. We will. But, I mean, if he's turning around looking at you as you go the other way, as you stole the ball, I mean, he can't protect it. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. We'll be sure to let you know for sure. Okay. Well, no, I want you to let me know because I'm going to hear a different story from Jansen. Okay. I'll definitely get back to you then. Okay. Jared West, our guest. Have fun at camp. Good talking to you. And um, don't wear out Jansen too much. I still need him to work his intern hours. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. I'll be sure to get back to you after tomorrow. Excellent. That's Jared West. I'm going to get the real deal here. I set you up, Jansen. I set you up to school him. It's all on you now. I set you up. David Kahn is going to join us from the West Virginia Power. We're going to talk power baseball. We're going to talk about the South Atlantic League All-Star Game. And, of course, I'm going to remind him that he picked the Boston Bruins to win the Stanley Cup. That's when we continue with today's edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Buckle up. Paul Swan has the wheel on The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Updating the poll question online, you can find it at Paul Swan on Twitter. Best basketball duo at Marshall University. Right now, with 54% of the vote, it's John Elmore and C.J. Burks. 23% Hal Greer and C.D. Price. 18% Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. And then 5% Skip Henderson and Rodney Holden. Now, that was a good duo, so I'm surprised they're at 5%. But, again, this also might be a generational thing. We'll find out. you got plenty of time to vote. Just if you're following me on Twitter, you can find the poll that way. Or you can go to Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, at Paul Swan. Another guy you should probably follow on Twitter is the voice of the West Virginia Power, David Kahn, who joins us now on the program, wrapping up a successful all-star game from the South Atlantic League held in the capital city. And what was the estimated uh, income that the, this event, along with some other events, uh, was bringing into the area? I heard the number of $10 million. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. No, we uh... – it was a great night. Uh, I'm still kind of uh, reveling in it right now. It still hasn't officially set in for me that, you know, it, it's it's over and it's done. But, I mean, my goodness, uh, hats off to the city of Charleston because the fans packed Appalachian Power Park last night. That was so fun. Uh, we had a great time. It was a great home run derby, great game. The tailgate party was tremendous. Uh, the fan support was wild. We were uh, – we were loving life yesterday. It was a really, a really hot, a very, a very high moment for our organization uh, as a whole and for the city of Charleston just to show off in front of the South Atlantic League. You know, we sold out the game. Uh, 6,237 was the attendance. It was, uh, it was absolutely tremendous and uh, definitely one of the highlights of my career and one of the highlights for uh, the West Virginia Power, for sure. How would this game compare to other games that you've been a part of, you witnessed as far as the All-Star game is concerned? You know, it was it was really fun, and it was really cool because, you know, you have all these different guys out there. They're wearing their own uniforms. They're wearing their own teams, and it's a little bit interesting because you have to make sure, you know, normally I'm mentioning a guy's name, but uh, when I'm mentioning a guy, I'm also mentioning his team. So instead of saying, like, oh, you know, uh, Terry goes to first, I'm saying Hickory's Terry goes to first. Uh, so it's a little interesting in that regard, but – the game itself was, was awesome. I mean, it was a pitcher's duel for five innings, and then you get to the sixth. Uh, Brandon Lockridge is a two-run bomb, and you're like, wow, okay, like, you know, there we go. The dam is broken. Let's see what happens. And, 
Uh, you know, the, the Northern Division fights back, gets a run, and then you look to the eighth inning, and just like has happened so many times this year, the Northern Division within West Virginia has come back, and uh, they put up a five spot in the eighth. Doran Turchin with a blister double to left center, and uh, it was it was awesome. I mean, that what a comeback and, and what a finish. Uh, we were uh, we were really happy with the way the game turned out and the fact that we did play the game because the weather did not look good until about two o'clock. Uh, yesterday afternoon, but at right at 2 o'clock, we were great. From our organization standpoint, at least with the players, uh, how do you feel everything went with uh, now this one game? It's not going to make or break anyone's career, but uh, how do you feel this one went specifically for power representation? Uh, they showed up. No, it was it was great. Brian Paul came in in the second inning and threw a shutdown inning, didn't give up a hit, uh, 10 pitches, 8 strikes, got a couple of Ks, so that was positive for him. Uh, Jake Anchia had three really solid innings on the plate. He didn't get a hit, but that's okay. Um, he played really solid defensively, and he sh- and he and he showed up in the home. Run. He got nine homers. Um, and then in the uh, uh, Clay Chandler didn't pitch because he pitched uh, was unable to go, but he still got to experience it and have a good time. And then uh, Dyson Audios gets the final out. I mean, there's not really much more you can ask for from power representation. Everybody played well and. And, you know, we uh, the Northern Division come out on top. David Kahn's our guest from the West Virginia Power, the South Atlantic League All-Star Game wrapping up in Charleston. And from a power standpoint, you get a great crowd. How much of a uh, push forward do you think you're going to get from this? How many people maybe were there that haven't been to a power game in a while or just uh, checking it out because it's something to do? It's an all-star game. And, you know, what do you think is a franchise, uh, the – good feelings that you're feeling today. Uh, how much of that's going to carry over to when we get back to actual power baseball? You know, I think it is going to carry over a little bit. I don't know how much, but I think there's going to be some people who came out to Appalachian Power Park for the All-Star game and go, man, I've never been here before, but what a performance that was put on last night. Now, of course, you know, it is the All-Star game that there is a little bit of extra pomp and circumstance that happens in a game like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, we that's the show we put on every night. You know, we did add the superstars and birds there, but we do fireworks shows all the time. We play really exciting baseball all the time. We have great promotions. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're seeing really what we put on at the highest level. So uh, I, we're getting a lot of positive feedback right now about the game and especially on social media from fans that were there. And, and you know, I, again, I have to say a huge thank you to all the fans that came out uh, for the All-Star game. You all were tremendous. They were loud. They were into it. Uh, during the home run derby, they were uh, they were really getting into it, riled up, and uh, it was it was great. You know, we we were we were really really excited about everything that happened, and and I think it's going to be a, a huge uh, boost of attendance and just a boost overall uh, for us in the second half and in uh, and in years to go because we I think we've attracted some new fans that may not necessarily be from Charleston, West Virginia, but now want to come back because of what they experienced. David Kahn, West Virginia Power, joining us on the program yesterday. The All-Star Game, South Atlantic League being held in the capital city. Of course, now uh, the act of getting back to business and playing for the second half and trying to get yourself into a playoff spot. Uh, As Power Baseball stands now, euphoria aside, uh, where's this team at as far as uh, ready to go and off to the races? Yeah, I mean, hey, we won seven in a row, so... (laughs) Uh, the, the team is really is in a good spot. Uh, I like the lineup we have right now. There's been a little movement movement here and there, but uh, hey, you win seven, you sweep the best team in minor league baseball at your home ballpark, and then you go on the road and, and take down Hagerstown in four games. Uh, you know, uh, records aside, that's a that's a great mark to end the first half on, and and I think this team is feeling really good about who they are and and what where they are right now as we go into the second half. We're gonna go play Lakewood for the first time in a long time. And uh, Lakewood has, has been a bit of a, a bit of a downer uh, in the Northern Division this year. So if West Virginia can keep riding this this hot streak that they had at the end of the first half, and uh, guys are coming off, you know, three days off to refresh, get their bodies right, uh, I think it's going to be a really really exciting second half. And and we've, we've got a good team. I mean, we've got some good, we've got some guys that are are really, you know, ready to to kind of take off in the second half and started showing it in the first half. So I'm really excited for this. Second half, so important because you're in a position now where if you can make a solid run, you get into, of course, the playoffs where you want to be with the power. Um, 
do you feel that you get the all-star game it's so successful you, you go into the uh, last part of the first half on a, a great win streak is this the perfect storm waiting to happen with everything I mean this is a pretty nice uh, event here it, it really was a showcase for Charleston for the state and as I mentioned earlier, the economic development part of that as well. Lawmakers and everyone involved loving you guys right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the economic impact of the All-Star Game was amazing, and uh, especially with festival being at the same time and, and just everything else that was going on. We had a bunch of different competitions that were all at the Charleston Convention Center the other day when, when we were there for the luncheon. So, you know, I mean, there was, uh, there was a big economic boom in Charleston over the last few days, and it's going to continue with festival uh, going on for the next couple of days. So uh, it's, it's all good. I mean, every, everything is great, and it is definitely the perfect storm right now for, for the city of Charleston and for the West Virginia Power, and we, are, uh, we couldn't be more excited, and we, uh, we certainly are, are glad that everything went the way that it did. But we do have... You know, we do have 35 more home games left. We have 70 home, 70 games overall in the season, and we're focused on those. Like, yes, it was great that we had an awesome All-Star game, and, and it truly did to everyone to help put it on. We're, we're so grateful and so blessed, but uh, we, we are still focused on, on putting on a show for the remaining 35 games of the season at home. David Kahn, our guest, West Virginia Power. Off to um, an exciting second half, and before we let him go, it's time to rain on his parade. Uh, hey, uh, look, um, I kept it all nice and tight, and we were, we had a great uh, interview here. We talked business, uh, and now we're going off off script. All right, yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, which one of us said that the Boston Bruins would win the Stanley Cup? Which one of us? That was, that was me. Which team won the Stanley Cup? Uh, the the Blues won. Yeah, you know, they they did they did win. I I was I was wrong, so I'll admit that. But I mean, look, St. Louis was in desperate need of a championship, so they got theirs, and now we'll be back next year. Which one of us said that the Blues would win? Which one of us? Which one? Of us? Uh, you know, I believe you said that you 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 thought the Blues were going to win, but that you actually don't have a vested interest in the game. So. I don't really know how to preface that because I don't think you want to say I was right. That's what I hear coming out of your mouth is you don't want to no, say that I, I was right. Said, I, I already I already said that. I said I was wrong. No, no. You haven't said I was right. But the, by saying I was wrong, that means you were right. Well just go ahead and say I was right then. Just say the words and I you just know. did. No, say the words. Paul Swan was right. Just go ahead and say it. <laughs> want to give you the satisfaction. I know. I love your tweets. <laughs> By the way, um, when the Stanley Cup was going on, David's like, hey, you know, Paul, you can text me at any time. I would love to hear from you because he was uh, he was thinking that this is going to go his way. So I text him about the first goal. He replies back plenty of time. Um, and I said, yeah, for more Blues goals. And then um, – <laughs> I, I text him again, let him know, oh, by the way, there's more goals. And then he, he informed me that he was watching. His tone changed a little bit. And and then um, when I pointed to uh, three goals, um, you were thinking of something to, to help you get intoxicated, I think, at that point. Well, okay, so let me go behind the curtain a little bit. Okay. I was actually on my way to, I was actually on my way to a date. Oh, the- okay. When the uh, when the third goal happened, um, ah. I, I had a date scheduled for after the game, so I basically just shot you that text saying I'm going to go drink. I was going to drink, but I was on a date. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so so I, that's why I stopped responding to you because I was trying to pay attention to my date. Fair enough, and uh, I love it when you said congrats. Now go back to being a Rangers fan. That was pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much. All right, you're right. Shut up. Leave me alone. <laughs> and now there's yeah, context behind ready. this. I have context now. It's like I'm on a date. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to say that in the time being because you were blowing up my Twitter. So I was like, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave this alone. I'll tell him later. But, yeah, I did blow uh, your no, Twitter I, up a little bit, didn't every, I? Yeah, no, but it was funny. I, I, honestly, I would have responded more, but I was on a date. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, it looked, hey. 
the, the game didn't go well, the date went well, so I still won. Hey, that's all it counts is you still won. Um, the um, Exactly. The studio audience and the producer's booth, they're all giving you the high fives and everything. <laughs> they're all they're all applauding you. I'm good. seriously, they're all applauding you. I mean, um Love it. Yeah, so there you go. David Kahn, it ends happily hey, I, for I, him. I knew I knew I would I knew I would need something to take my mind off of the fact that the Bruins were losing. Luckily I already had the date scheduled, so that helped. Yeah. Um but um yeah, it was actually the first time I ever pulled off a pulled off a uh, in game ballpark date. David. That was uh that was difficult. I, hey if if it works, it works. Yeah. David Kahn, our guest, West Virginia Power. Um, you can follow him online at SportsCon4. SportsCon4. And uh, you can blow his Twitter feed up at any time. Uh, he um, yeah. deserves it. I've been uh, I've been blowing, my, blowing other people's Twitters up right now because I've been posting about the All Star Game. But <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take a break for about 24 hours. Enjoy it and um, take it all in. I'm sure this will be on the uh, 2020 uh, marketing video for uh, West Virginia Power Baseball. All this, all this goodness. I'm, I'm sure you'll be video editing soon, or somebody will be. Yeah, I mean, my my assistant Kyle will be uh, will be video editing like crazy, probably to get this thing ready. But um, yeah, no, it, it'll definitely be you know marketing for the future. And hey, I mean, we we put on one act of a show, and and the next time we have it, we're gonna do the same thing. So. Uh, it was it was great. We had a, a really good time with everyone coming into town. Uh, Andy McKay was tremendous uh, from the Mariners, and uh, the mayor was was such a big supporter. The city of Charleston, the CBB, uh, Segra was just an outstanding partner for us. And, and we could we can't thank everybody that came out. You know, we had the superstars, we had Bird Dirk, we had a really good fireworks show. Everybody that came together to help put this event uh, to be the way it was just made it truly that much more special. And, and, again, we can't thank everyone enough for that. And, and a big thank you to the fans. We sold out. We sold out the game. So that was that was a huge goal for us. We hit that, and that was a really big moment. David Connor, guest, West Virginia Power. We'll have him back on next week where we will argue and disagree over something else. We just have to figure out what that will be. I was going to say, there's no, there's no hockey. Do we have to disagree over baseball now, too? Uh, I mean, no, we don't have to. We can We can move on. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll figure out something. But I do agree with the with the current Twitter poll right now. I do think any duo with with John Elmore has to be the top spot. Any duo, any duo. Not, not okay. Not any duo, but like the 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 fact that John. I mean, John Elmore elevates the duos by himself. Is what I'm saying. He's okay. really good. So if it was John Elmore and Jansen Williams, would it still be the best? <laughs> okay. It, no, but. Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, all I'm saying is that John Elmore helps. You know, elevate. He's, he's like a. He's like a LeBron. He. You know, he. He comes in and makes teams better. Wow, man. Uh, by the way, you said that Elmore and Jansen Williams would not elevate a duo. What What do you have to say about that, Jansen? Man, that's. <laughs> ain't that something, Paul? That hurts, doesn't it? Ain't that something? That hurts. That's oh, what... you didn't tell me you had Jansen in the studio. <laughs> Hey man, how you doing? You're just set, you're, you're just setting me up for be- Jansen. I'm sorry, man. I wouldn't have. Uh, Paul, hey, Paul's all just all trying all to all sabotage me. I love it. It's look, like, look, hey, Paul, I wouldn't have. Paul, Paul, I would have insulted Jansen if I knew he was in listening range. Is what you just said. No, that's, that's that's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm all I'm saying is, I, this was not a quip on Jansen. This is a this is a quote on Elmore and how good he was. David Kahn, West Virginia Power. We're gonna we're gonna let him gracefully exit this now, and uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Huh. You threw that out the window when you made me insult the studio audience. <laughs> Have a good ha, good Don luck on your next it. date. Uh, good luck in your next date. Uh, that's my my wish for yeah, you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> there he is. He is one David Kahn, West Virginia Power. I'm sorry, Jansen. Um, we'll um. Jansen's Jansen going to be okay. He'll be okay. Quick timeout. We come back, wrap it up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. To learn more, you're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan, the 2019 West Virginia Broadcasters Association Best Talk Show on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. 
Let's get you updated on the poll. You can go to Paul Swan on Twitter to vote. And right now, we're asking best basketball duo at Marshall University with 58% of the vote right now. And it's early. John Elmore and C.J. Burks, 21%. Hal Greer and C.B. Price, 17% of the vote. It's Mike D'Antoni and Russell Lee. And with 4% of the vote, Skip Henderson and Rodney Holden. And that's today's question. Best basketball duo at Marshall University. Now, uh, let me qualify that. I'm going to do another one. So I want to qualify this one. Best men's basketball duo. Because I think we're going to have to do our research now and come up with the best women's duos at Marshall University. That's going to be a future question, I think. We're going to ask you which women's duo is the best at Marshall University. And that means i got to figure out who I pair Shana Gore with. i got to figure that out. So we'll work on that as well. But you got the poll question you can vote on today. We'll have the results tomorrow. And, of course, yesterday's poll question, uh, Runaway. It was, a, um, it was a runaway smash hit. Pennington and Moss. Best football duo at Marshall University, 87%. I actually got some, uh, some, some private messages yesterday on social media telling me, hey, here's somebody else you should have thought of, or hey, here's someone else you could have come up with. Let me check these out real quick while I've got a second. Um, Sean Doctor's name came up. Yeah, he would have been good to throw in with somebody. Uh, Tony Peterson, John Gregory, you know, Mike Barber, Tony Peterson, Mike Barber, John Gregory could have been a, a good combination. Uh, Sean Doctor, throw him in as well. So, uh, But overwhelming, I think everyone decided that, okay, if it's Marshall football, it begins and ends with Pennington to Moss. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I want to thank our guest today, David Kahn from the West Virginia Power, a very good sport at all things and does a fantastic job for the power. Also, I want to thank Jared West, Marshall University, a basketball camp going on this week at the university. For our show producers this afternoon, one Gabriel Sellers and our special summer intern, Jared West's very best friend, Jansen Williams. All those nice things he said about you, man, you wrote that. You definitely wrote those nice things. You did well, though. That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive. Don't forget, if you miss any part of the program, you can always find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio. Tune in. We're on Spotify as well. Or you can just go to the website, wrvc.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I post a link every day. That's going to do it for this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.